What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video with me, Mr. Oldenburg, teaching you some math. Uh, today we're finishing up the unit on dividing fraction, unit fractions and whole numbers. Uh, and we're going to talk about repeated reasoning, which means are we using the same method over and over to find similar answers. So today we started off with a problem that talked about the difference between Sue's equations and Randy's equations and finding any differences, comparisons, what, what did you notice? And when I look at a lot of what Sue over here did, I see that she started with whole numbers every time and she divided by fractions every time. That led to us getting greater numbers. Because we started with, say, like four pizzas. We divided each into thirds. So we cut each of these pies into three pieces. We ended up with 12. So we have more pieces. We don't have more pies. The pies didn't change, but I do have more pieces. That's why you're able to see the equal sign, because that 12 actually equals 4 divided by 1 third. If I finish these, I notice that I can also multiply my denominator by my whole number because my denominator always tells me how many pieces are in a whole. This tells me how many holes I have. So if I multiply the two together, I would get my answer. That's also doing this, taking the whole number, using the inverse operation, and using the reciprocal of the fraction. So if I'm filling in the other answers, 2 times 12 is 24, and 6 times 100 is 600. I can do that mentally now. When I look at Randy's equations, Randy over here is starting with all fractions and dividing by whole numbers. So when I see my answer over here, I'm noticing they're all fractions. They're actually less than what I started with. And that also makes sense because this is saying I have a third. All right, I have a third. And let me fill it in, make it a little translucent. Oh, that's fatter. It's not what I want. There we go. Here's my third. I have a third, okay? And what it's saying now is to take that third and to cut that into four pieces. So I'm taking something small or less than one and I'm making it even smaller. Now you might say, well, one, two, three, four, there's four pieces, it should be four. But that's not true because you always have to relate it back to the whole. And if I look at that whole, there are now 12 pieces there. All right? So again, with this one, I can still multiply across. So 12 times 2 is going to be 1 24th, and 1 hundredth divided by 6 is going to be 1 six hundredth, which is like microscopic, by the way. All right. So this was a great problem in class. It illustrates exactly what I talked about. Allie partitioned a four-foot board into half-foot pieces. She counted eight pieces. Here's what we needed to realize. I have my four-foot board. Now what's funny is I'm going to draw this. It's sitting right up there at the top, but whatever. I'm going to show you how it's cut in each step. The thing that I really need to pay attention to is this half foot pieces. It wasn't cut in half. This is four feet cut in half. That would give me an answer of two. This is saying half foot pieces. So what do I know right away? I know that I need to cut it into feet. So four feet is right there. Then I'm cutting those feet in half. All right, so now I have one, two, well, I actually get my pointer when I do that. I need to be better about that. Here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight pieces, so if I start with a, a block of wood or whatever, a, a board uh, that's four feet, and I cut them into half foot sections, I should get eight sections because each foot would have two pieces, two times four. Eight. And that's what this says here. I have four feet. I'm dividing it 
into half foot sections. When I take the uh, inverse operation and the reciprocal, I should get eight pieces. Now moving from that, we have a second set to do. She then took the half foot partition board. So she took one of these and cut that into four equal pieces. So now they're saying, all right, now you have a half. So instead of starting with the whole number, now I'm starting with a fraction, and I'm dividing that by four. When I do this problem, I'm gonna get an eighth, because what's happening is I'm taking that half, and I'm splitting that into four pieces. But I can't just do it on the half. I always have to go back to a hole. And in that hole, you will see that we have one. Come on. Where's the, where's the arrow? I hit the arrow. This isn't fair. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And I would get one of them as the unit rate. Now what I want to talk to you about is if we looked back at this problem, Sue used the same method every time. She divided a whole number by a fraction. Randy used the same method every time. He used a fraction divided by a whole number. In this problem, we did not use the same method. Here we divided a whole number by a fraction. Here we divided a fraction by a whole number. Now while they might look very similar that um, we switched the numbers, what we're dividing is different. We're still dividing, but the way we're dividing and what we're dividing is different. Marcus made the following generalization. 12 divided by 1 fifth equals 12, 1 twelfth times 1 fifth. Is he correct? Explain. So we talked about this in class, and just about everybody got it right. The biggest thing is we have to compare what's going on. So if I saw a problem like this, 12 divided by 1 fifth, the first thing I'm doing is I need to see it. So I'm going to write 12 divided by 1 fifth. And then I'm also going to make the problem. And the first thing I notice is my problem does not match what he said. Now I got to figure out why. What's different between the two? Well, in my problem, I still have 12 over 1, and I have 5 over 1. He has the reverse of what I have, doesn't he? So what changed? Well, I took the reciprocal normally. He did the reciprocal of the first number. We know that we're supposed to do the reciprocal of the second number every time. So his big mistake was he took the wrong reciprocal. All right, this was the question that I screwed up in class at first and then showed you why it was a good way to fix it. And this had to do with the reading carefully. Nathan has two eight-foot boards. So, you know, I drew two eight-foot boards. Here's one, it's eight. Here's another, it's eight. All right, he cuts one board into quarter-foot pieces. And I read it fast, and what did I do? I cut it into four pieces. And then... He cuts the other board in half, and that's what I did there, all right? And that's what I did, and that's wrong because I didn't read that it's foot pieces. This unit matters. It tells you everything. So when I got to number one where it said to write the equation for how many quarter foot pieces could be cut from an eight foot board, I said, well, I have eight feet, and I'm dividing it into quarters, right? And I would think, oh, yeah, quarters because I got four pieces. However... When you do the problem, right? Oh, and they also said write an equation, so make sure you have an equal sign and a variable. And I take the reciprocal, you get 32 pieces. And you're like, what? Wait a minute, I got four pieces over there? That doesn't make any sense. I, I stared at the board a minute because that's what you do when you're wrong. You don't just move on and say, oh, yeah, well, that must be it. You say, where did I go wrong? What part did I do wrong? And I realized pretty quickly that... I didn't talk about the foot pieces. So each piece was that way. So now, not only am I cutting eight and four, I need 
to cut eight into single pieces. So now I got eight ones, because we always measure the whole. Then, that's what I'm cutting in the quarters. And how many pieces would that be? Well, eight times four, 32. Because they want to know what this is. Or how many of those there are in all. On number two, it says find how many half foot pieces you can cut from an eight foot board. So again, I need to start with the hole. So what color do I need? I can't see. All right, got four. Music. All right. All I have to do here is cut these in half. Oh, that's a pointer, not a pen, Ron. Boom. Cut in half. So how many do I have? Well, I'm going to have one piece, right? And that's out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times two, 16. If I do the work, I have an eight foot board. I'm dividing it by half. So eight, inverse operation, reciprocal fraction, 16 pieces. So I should get 16 pieces. And I was looking at a unit rate. Terrible, terrible. This question also said, can you repeat the method used in exercise one to solve the problem? And here, yes, we can. Because if we look, we're dividing a whole number by a fraction. Sure, the numbers are different, but the method's the same. Finally, a landscaper's truck is dirty. Did you laugh? No? All right, fine. I guess facts aren't funny, but they are. I was a landscaper for four years while going to college. They're dirty. They're fun, but dirty. A landscaper's truck is filled with half a ton of gravel. Stop. Don't do anything. Here is half a ton of gravel. The whole thing would represent one ton, right? You know what? Let's just write gravel. I like that better. Let's write gravel. Okay, the gravel is shared equally among three projects. Shared equally, division. So they want me to write and solve a division equation first. Okay, what do I have? I don't have three, I have half of a ton. And I'm dividing that into three projects. Remember, equations have equal signs and variables. So I could do the math, one half, inverse, reciprocal. I want to know how much each project's going to get of a ton of gravel. And they're going to get one sixth. Now, when I go back to my picture, I have my half a ton and I'm dividing it into thirds. But I got to look at the whole. Because, sure, this is filled. If they said how much, um, how much of the gravel would be divided into each uh, um, project, you could say one-third because you would me be measuring of the gravel. But we're measuring of a whole ton. We have half a ton, but we got to go back to the whole. And here we're saying that I will use this piece at one job, this piece at another, this piece at another. So one job, two jobs, three jobs, out of a total of a ton would have filled six jobs. Suppose another truck. Whoop, let me draw a truck is filled with half a ton of gravel. Find out how much gravel you're gonna get from that half ton if it's shared equally among eight projects, okay? Two, four. Now, I just cut it into eight jobs. Some people looked at me weird today when I did this because you're like, wait, wait, that's 16. Yeah, you can do 16 jobs with a full ton of gravel. 
We only have half. We had to separate it into eight jobs. This is one job, two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, five jobs, six jobs, odd jobs, eight jobs. Get it? Odd, seven. Odd job was a James Bond character through a hat. Very cool character. Anyway. So we're going to break it up in eight. Can you repeat the method that you used in exercise three? Sure, because what am I doing? I'm still starting with a fraction. I'm starting with half. I'm dividing it by a different amount of jobs, but, but I am still doing the same method. And that's what this uh, lesson was about. Are you using the same method to get similar answers? Numbers can change but the method is what matters. Hopefully it's been a good review. Um, I kept it under 20 minutes. I've kept them all under 20 minutes. Please keep watching.